Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to do a quick demo for you, just explaining a little bit more about the um, graphite powder technique. I'm going to do it in real time this time because um, you seem to like the last drawing I've done with the, with the graphite technique, but because it was a speed drawing, um, probably missed out you know a few of the important points and the details, which I'll just go over now. Um, one of the things um, to remember when you're using graphite powder. Um, well, actually I think I've mentioned this in other videos, the fact that I don't actually buy graphite powder in jars or bottles or anything like that, I use um, graphite sticks because I know what the grade is, they say it on them what grade it is, this one's actually worn off but I put a sticker on it saying HB, and that's the lightest graphite stick that I've got. But if I buy a jar of graphite powder, it never ever says what the grade is, I'm assuming, um, I mean I might be wrong here, if somebody can leave a comment if they know anything about this, but I'm assuming the graphite powder that you buy in these jars um, is all the leftover graphite from all the various grades of pencils, what they've been carving up in the factory, and you just get a great big mix of all that. So it's no specific grade, it's just whatever it is at the time. Um, unless anybody can put me right on that. I'm, I'm just kind of assuming that. So to play safe, I use graphite sticks and I know exactly what grade they are. Like for example, if I want to do a sky, I want to use the lightest one I've got. And also something else which is um, quite hard to pick up in the video, it's even hard to pick up um, doing this. And it's the height of the graphite stick from the paper. It can make a great difference as to whether you hold it close to the paper or away from the paper. So for example, if I was doing a sky, I'd hold this well, you can't use. In fact, let me just bring in my my trusty set square here, and I can roughly measure. I mean, if I was to scrape some powder off that now for a sky, I'd hold it quite a way away, about nine or ten centimeters off of the paper, and I'd just lightly go over it like that. And you can see that the graphite is kind of spreading itself out as it goes over the page there like a nice light sprinkling of it um, and if for example I hold this maybe a centimeter off of the um, paper you can see that you get a darker more concentrated area of graphite so that's part of the technique you know the height that you actually hold this over the paper now if I just get a, a clean piece of um, kitchen towel here or kitchen paper fold it over. Always um, use the flat side, don't scrunch it up like that and go in like that, you'll make a lot of kind of scratchy marks, unless of course that's the, the look that you're going for, that's the effect that you want, but usually when you want to smooth something out, keep that paper folded and use the flat surface of it, okay. Um, so on the lighter area here, bear in mind this is all HB, if I just start off lightly, it'll look a bit scratchy to start with, um, but we'll just blend it in. I don't even know if the camera's going to pick that up, it's so light. Okay, that's fairly light. Can you see, I just look on the viewfinder there, can you see that? Uh, yeah, you can kind of see where that's kind of blended out. Um, this is just printer paper, by the way, so it's not going to be brilliant. So, But on the darker area, um, which is the same HB powder, if I just smooth that out, because it was more of a concentration there, you can see the effect of that. I mean, I can keep sort of softening that out all the way across the page if I want to. You can really move graphite around a lot. That's the beauty of it. You see, it, you know, it got you got a dirty tissue there and it just just keeps working for you. You can kind of add these kind of distant tree type of things. But anyway, that's all from an HB graphite stick. So now if I want to, for example, make this area a little bit darker, I'll go in with a darker graphite stick. This is a 4B and Say for example we've got light coming in this way and I want to kind of darken this, this edge off just here. Again I'm about one centimetre, two centimetres 
off of the paper. If I want to get really close, I mean I will literally just touch the graphite on the paper um, to get a much more concentrated area. Okay, so if I just get the kitchen tower again and just, just blend that in. Now this won't be as dark as it would be if I'd done it on plain paper because once you've got graphite down there, if you put any darker graphite over it, it won't be quite as dark because the, the, the graphite underneath kind of holds it off a little bit. But it'll still be dark enough um, you know, to achieve a good contrast. So, I mean, I put a bit too much of it on there, so that's probably darker than I really wanted it. But you can see what I mean. You, you've kind of got control um, over your tones when you're using graphite sticks or graphite blocks. Um, so this is like a very similar technique um, to what you've seen me doing in the, in the previous demo there. Um, so I'm looking at that now, I'm trying to see if I can actually turn that into a landscape or something. Uh, it wasn't meant to be, it was just, <laughs> it was just meant to be to show you the yeah, graphite powder. But, um, <clears throat> Imagination is running away with me. I'm kind of seeing a bit of a landscape coming on here, so we'll go with it and see what happens. Uh, well, it won't be a you know, proper landscape, it's just going to be a bit of a demonstration. So, as you, as you can see, we've got some nice sort of misty tree shapes, background bushes, and things like that. Um, and you've seen me go in with a eraser and Pull out some of the graphite to suggest um, a few white birch trees. Let me just get rid of the, the dust there. There we go. <clears throat> so it's like a negative drawing technique, really, because I mean, usually we're starting off going light from dark, but in this case, we're starting off going the opposite way. You know, dark. Um, yeah, sorry, dark to light, and we can keep going like that because, say, for example, we haven't got a silver birch tree. Um, in front of this bush. Um, we've got sort of more distant trees that are in shade and they're very similar tone to this. We'll just sort of outline them. Um, just if, you know, coming out of the, the picture there. Just at the HB again, I'm just pressing fairly lightly. Um, okay, so now that doesn't stand out at all. The only thing, I mean, you probably can't see it in the camera, but the only thing that's telling us that that's a tree there, are those pencil lines. So what we've got to do, we've got to give it more definition. There's several ways we can go about that. We can either lighten this off or darken the background off. And in this case, I'm going to darken the background off and it's going to make this tree look lighter. So this is literally negative drawing. Not negative as in bad or horrible, you know, negative as in um, photo um, style, you know. <laughs> so as you can see I'm just kind of darkening either side of the um, the tree there that I drew in the lines that's instantly giving it a little bit more definition and I want it to kind of fade out lightly at the top so I will blend it um, in a moment so if you're doing this don't think oh no I've lost all that lovely soft um, graphite powder, misty look. So we can get that back in a minute. Okay, and just to add a little bit, def bit more definition around the bottom. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker, just either side. Okay, I like that. And then I'll go in this time. I'm going to use a paper blending stump, um, fairly clean one actually. I'm going to try and find a clean side because I don't want to go too dark at the back. I'm just going to take the edge of the, the graphite that I drew, just there, I'm just going to kind of circular motions and taking it out towards the edge where it's going to get lighter, I'm just going to get more feathered out and softer, and I'm going to get that nice misty look back again. And the same with the darker areas here, I mean they're going to get a little bit lighter as you're blending them out because obviously you're removing some of the graphite, but don't worry about that. Right now I'm just looking for a nice soft sort of background 
which is going to contrast well with this tray in front. It's something like I'll just kind of just blend that out a bit more there, a bit softer. There we go. Now, if we imagine the lights coming in from this direction, um, and we put a bit of a highlight along this side of the tree. As you can see the tree is lost as it goes past that darker area so what we'll need to do, just remove the dust there, is um, just darken the shaded side. Just to give us a little bit more definition there. And we'll blend that in as well. Um, I'll use a smaller blender for that. shadow just around the base of the tree there. And obviously we're going to have some branches coming off here and there. I'm not you know drawing a specific tree or anything here, it's just a demonstration just to give you the idea. But already I can see that um, it's getting a bit muddy and a bit lost just in there so I'm going to just darken that side the bush a little bit more just to give the tree more contrast. I'll blend that in a little bit more at the top there. That gives a little bit more contrast there. So that's kind of a negative drawing technique using um, graphite powder. Um, you know you can really really um, get some incredible results with this um, for very little effort. So okay, I'm just looking for my razor. Where's it gone? I will use this one. Um, I'm just kind of looking at that thinking, I don't know, maybe, maybe just in there a little waterfall or something, let's just see. Um, something like that. Maybe another birch tree or something coming off there like that. Okay, so now I'm starting to get the feel for this. I'm starting to actually see, um, you know, a little composition forming, a little landscape happening. And I had nothing at all planned at the start. Um, so basically, once that graphite powder goes down, it's almost guiding you along. I mean, obviously you can use it for, you know, your pre-planned drawings um, and drawings that you're copying and things like that. But just for letting your imagination go, this is brilliant. Give a bit more contrast to that. It's there, maybe a few rocks or something. And again, this is just going over the graphite powder. You know, once it's already down there, you've got something to work to. Um, it gives you a great start. Sort of blend that out a little bit. Too dark there, that's okay. Um, so okay, if that's a waterfall, we're gonna have some water along here. Camera's probably not picking this up too well actually because I kept it fairly light. Um, and again with these birch trees, I think you, you, you got the idea from the demonstration last time, but it's just a case of suggesting the the bark and a few of the branches and everything. And I'm not making any sort of um, effort here to produce a nice finished drawing. It's just a demonstration again in real time, just to kind of show you how how I done the last one. Again, we're looking for light against dark. <coughs> Excuse me, to give us the best contrast and the best definition um, between things, and always um, your eyes going to be drawn to where there's the most definition. So, although that's a really dark area there um, and a light area there, I mean you, it's, it's kind of clashing with this. So, if we make this a bit darker, sorry, the camera just cuts out. 
So if we make this a bit darker, just here, near the waterfall, this, this will give us a, a nicer focal point. at the minute, I mean this is just sort of rocks or grass or I don't, I don't know yet, I'm just going to see what it looks like and what I can turn it into, really. Maybe it's reflecting down a little bit, whatever it is in there. dirty part of this tissue that's got a bit of graphite on it and just kind of smooth that out a little bit. Let's give it more of a softer appearance there. I mean, it's like I said, I'm not trying to do a finished drawing, it's just um, explaining a little bit more about the graphite powder method and sort of negative drawing techniques. Um, so that's just a kind of a little demonstration. I'll just show you as well if you want to get some um, tree canopies, you can use it, you know, dirty paper stump um, and kind of just put some tree canopy shapes in there sort of off in the distance high up and everything and if they're looking a bit a bit funny just kind of get a cleaner blender and just soften them back even more it all adds to that nice sort of misty effect Maybe another darker tree just sort of hanging over there. You can just keep going with these. Another one there. twigs on it and that'll give us a little bit better contrast with that birch tree in the foreground. So for creating nice misty foggy effects it's absolutely ideal. I don't like those canopies actually that I put in so I'll just soften those back with the needable eraser. side a little bit more, a bit more definition there, little bits of grass. One thing to remember <coughs> is with these background bush, bushes you can bring them forward a little bit more and add a little bit of detail. If they're looking a bit um, bare and just like a big smudge mark of pencil or something, you can go in with the fine eraser and start just doing little dots and highlights but bear in mind this will bring them forward and it will make it clash more with the foreground tree and everything. Um, but it is a good way to get rid of the blandness of it. Especially um, in the more forward parts. Um, like whereas you know this is in the distance here, more misty and more in the background. I won't put any detail there, but just on these little bits here, you can few nice sort of grassy effects, leaves and twigs and things. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that I think. I mean it's just a quick demonstration in real time just to show you roughly um, the graphite powder technique uh, in real time. So remember um, the height at which you hold your graphite block or graphite stick um, is going to determine you know the spread of the powder as it hits the paper which in turn is going to give you a lighter or darker effect. So be mindful of that when you're actually scraping. Um, you know, if you want a sky effect, don't hold it close and work loads of graphite over. Just be nice and subtle and let it just fall in a very fine layer. Okay. 
Right, okay, so, I mean, obviously, I, <laughs> if this was going to be a finished drawing, I'd spend a lot longer than this, that's it. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll leave it at that. It gives you, gives you the idea in real time. It's so like I say, it's very easy. There's no technical drawing or complicated line drawings or perspectives to worry about. Um, just go for it. Just scrape a bit of graphite powder on there and just go for it and have fun and enjoy it. It's really a lot easier than it looks. I can promise you it really is. It's very, very easy. Okay, so I hope that's been um, a bit more helpful to you than the last video. Um, so thanks very much for viewing and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.